This video is about my favorite connection to geometry that occurs in the math of symmetrical components. If you haven't watched my last video, I recommend spending three minutes checking that out because I will connect back to it at the end of this video to explain the rotating image in front of you now. Here's a set of ABC phasers and the associated symmetrical component phasers. I'll increase the negative sequence to one half with positive sequence equal to one, and I'll overlay the sequence reconstructions of the phasers to help with the visuals here. Tracing the path of the phasers as I rotate the negative sequence 360 degrees creates three circles of the same size as the negative sequence circle. And likewise, the same thing happens as I rotate the positive sequence phaser around. I'll remove the B and C phase circles now just to make this image less busy. The negative sequence circle has an area of pi v2 squared. And likewise, the positive sequence circle has an area of pi v1 squared, with the difference of the areas shown here. It may not seem important to show these areas now, but I'll be coming back to this soon. Now, I'll rotate the positive and negative sequence phasers at the same time but in opposite directions. The ABC phasers now trace out a path of an ellipse whose center shares the same center as the phasers. This ellipse is known as the Steiner ellipse and was discovered by the mathematician Jacob Steiner who lived in the 1800s. The long axis of this ellipse, also called the semi-major axis, is just the sum of the V1 and V2 phasers. And the short axis, also called the semi-minor axis, is just the difference of the V1 and V2 phasers. I went back to the original equations for the Steiner ellipse, which used the side lengths of the triangles. Here I'm showing as A, B, and C, and I converted them to equations based on the V1 and V2 magnitudes. The cancellations that occurred were remarkable, and the ellipse seems almost meant to be described by using symmetrical components. The area of this ellipse turns out to be the same as the difference in V1 and V2 circle areas I referenced a minute ago. The eccentricity of the ellipse, which is a measure of how curved it is, is a great way to measure unbalance in the three-phase system. When the V2 over V1 ratio is zero, the eccentricity is zero as well. And when V2 over V1 is 100%, so is the eccentricity. For low values of V2 over V1, for example from zero to 10%, the eccentricity ranges from zero to 57%. This provides a higher resolution look in the region of unbalance that's usually of most concern when controlling unbalance. This measure of unbalance is also independent of the angle between V2 and V1. As the V2-V1 angle changes, the ellipse rotates as well, but the shape, size, and eccentricity of the ellipse doesn't change. So, how do we find the symmetrical components of an ellipse? First, we find the two axes of the ellipse, and then an easy conversion gives us the magnitudes of the positive and negative sequence components. And consequentially, we can construct all ABC phasers that fit within the ellipse for any angle between V2 and V1. Adding a zero sequence component doesn't affect the ellipse since all it does is shift the whole shape across the plane. For further explanation on that, see my video link in the description. And that's all. To conclude, I'll combine the lesson from this video and my most recent one into one animation. Here, I show a rotation of the Steiner ellipse around the Fermat point. Even though the system is very dynamic, multiple types of unbalanced values are not changing, and the phasor angles don't change either. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe for notifications about future videos on power system theory topics.